one of the things that a lot of our industry struggled with was trying to regulate employees and not let them have their phone in their hand, but we actually encourage it. We ask them to help us uh, do TikToks. Everybody gets involved. It really brings in a sense of camaraderie. We're not constantly saying, get off your phone, get off your phone, get off your phone. We're encouraging them, get on your phone, take the pictures, take the videos, promote the brand. Don't conduct your analysis in isolation because data is so incredibly powerful. Not defending just the tribe, but defending the organization. Those creative people that you really want to keep empowered, keep excited, keep motivated, keep thinking. A good experience pays dividends down the line. Stereotypes tend to break down in proximity. Welcome to We're Only Human, a podcast about human resources, business, technology, and the workplace. My name is Ben Eubanks, your host, and I'm so glad you're here. Hey, everyone. Glad to have you here with us and looking forward to a fun conversation with some amazing HR leaders. You may be hungry by the time we're done with this. They're going to talk about some amazing different restaurant brands and some of the things that they're doing, serving their workforce, supporting the frontline worker, and creating a better employee experience overall. I'm Ben Eubanks. I'll be hosting and guiding the conversation today. I'm a researcher. I'm an author. I'm a speaker. And I've been working alongside the Harry team for a while to really help tell the story, support the frontline worker in the work that we're doing and ever connecting with the people doing that work. So I'm going to just dive right into it really quickly. We have three amazing panelists who are going to be here with us and be sharing their stories, going to be talking about what they're doing, giving some practical tips, some advice, some strategies, all those kinds of things as we go through this. And I'm going to just do the quick round robin for each of you, do the intros. Gemma, why don't you start us off? Quick intro, who you are, what you do, and how long you've been in the restaurant space. Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Gemma Ely, and I am the UK and Ireland People Director for Hawksmoor. Hawksmoor is a steak restaurant, and we've got 11 sites across the UK and Ireland and about 1,000 employees. I've been with Hawksmoor and in hospitality for just over a year. I've been in hospital, sorry, in HR for much longer, but previously in retail, but really enjoying my first experience in hospitality. I've learned lots and hopefully can share a bit about that today with you. Wonderful. Glad to have you here. Anna, you're up next. Hi, everyone. Happy to be here. My name is Anna Ledesma, and I currently am the Director of Human Resources at Just Salad. Just Salad is a quick service restaurant here in the U.S. We have over 60 restaurants right now, and our big focus is on sustainability, and we recently got our B Corps certification, which we're very proud of. And I've been in the HR industry for nine, 10 years, almost all of it in hospitality. So, yeah. Wonderful. Glad to have you with us. All right. And last but not least, Michelle, go for it. Aloha, everyone. I am Michelle Corkins. I am with Hawaiian Bros Island Grill. We, I've been in the restaurant industry for about three years. I've been in the HR industry for over 15 years, I was in the ski industry before, so a little bit of restaurant in that too, but I love working for this brand. I love using Harry. I think that we are just trying to bring the islands to the Midwest and beyond, so we're growing. We have about 40 locations currently, just franchised to several locations, so we will be growing out. So we're going to be branching off now and growing fast, so hopefully you guys will get to see us soon. Wonderful. Goodness. I'm so excited to, by the diverse mix of types of organizations that you all represent. You may be in the same general space, but there's different flavors, different, maybe that's a good pun, I don't know, different kind of flavors of what you're doing and how you're approaching it and even the kind of people you're hiring, how you're serving them. So I'm excited to get into that in the conversation today and again, bring some ideas to everyone. By the way, anyone out there who's listening in, if you've got questions for the panelists, please throw them in the chat. Let us know what you want to hear from them. I'll do my very best to make sure and squeeze those in so that I've got a lot of them that I want to ask. I want to, I'm very curious, but if you have something you want to know from them or they say something that you're like, ooh, tell me more, please pop that in the chat. We'd love to make sure we address those for you as we go through today. All right, so to kick us off, Jim, I want to throw one to you to start off. I just want to hear from you broadly just to set the stage a little bit. What sort of trends have you noticed recently when it comes to the workforce? What's going on there? What's changing there? And how are you responding to that? So I think the biggest thing for us really is probably post pandemic, people thinking differently about their lives and what they want from it. And that really is by and large around work. So we hear a lot more people talking about wanting a really good work life balance. I think where people had time on their hands, potentially in the pandemic, they were able to 
try out new hobbies, set up side hustles. And I think we're seeing a lot more moving, a lot more people moving out of the industry as a result, unfortunately. I think it's a fantastic place for a career, but it doesn't necessarily suit everybody. And we've seen some people that have been lifetime hospitality workers moving on to do different things, which is difficult. We've really noticed that we've eroded some of that kind of depth and strength of skill that we've had in the workplace. And we've needed to think a little bit differently about where we're looking and who we can attract. And I think really what, in the way that we've responded, rather than trying to necessarily do anything too gimmicky, I think it's just been doubling down on the things that have always been important to us, but really doing a great job of talking to candidates about that and also the existing team that we've got. We focus quite a lot about stability and opportunity at Hawksmoor, so we're growing. We've got a couple of restaurants in the US, well, one in the US, and we're about to open another one next year in Chicago. That's a really tempting opportunity for people that are, you know, coming in to our sites in the UK and thinking potentially I could have an international career. So we're providing that opportunity. We're also providing stability. I think a restaurant company that is growing people feel really confident that they are going to have their job. Sadly, that's not necessarily the case for every hospitality business at the moment, but really focusing on those things and holding true to what it is that we believe in and our culture, I think is the best way to respond rather than something that's a bit more flash in the pan and trying to grab headlines, but not necessarily dealing with some of the concerns that employees might have. So yeah, that's the first thing that springs to mind. There's a lot of underlying factors in that, right? I like that you set the stage broadly there. One of the things I'm thinking about there, like for the people coming in, if they join one of these new ones, like that the brand's established, it's stable, like you, all those things. There's also like a bit of novelty to, hey, you get to step in the first time we're really doing this in the States. You get to influence that and you get a chance to serve people and be the brand ambassador for some a name meaning people wouldn't know here, right? So there's some fun stuff to that one. Awesome. What about your other two? Any thoughts from you on what's trending, what's changing, what you're noticing when it comes to the workforce? I can go, Ben. Sure. I think that one of the things that we've noticed is the necessity to be fast and to be faster than the other guy, to get the employees to their paychecks faster and more efficient. And so Harry's been really great at helping us reduce some of like the friction of and the headaches that employees go through when going through the application process, onboarding, checking on their schedule. And so we we really think that we've use that tool to become fast and get people. We, we still love to use the human element because our culture, we embrace Ohana and we want to reach out and be the first ones to talk to them. But technology, especially Harry, has helped us be fast and efficient. This may be a dumb question, but what is Ohana? And it's important. Ohana means family. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I have to stay in the stitch voice when our kids ask me what that is. So and like, nobody gets left behind. <laughs> yes, nobody gets left behind. Awesome. We love that movie. That's one of the few voices I can do when I'm not doing the webinar voice. All right, awesome. Yeah. Anything to add to that? <laughs> Things you're seeing changing? Anything that you want to like? Yes, we're seeing the same thing as Jim or Michelle said. What, what's your thought there? Yeah, I mean, definitely life outside of work has become very important post pandemic. And finding ways to help our employees give them like stability, like Gemma said, or like Michelle said, like finding ways to get things to them quickly. So for example, one of the things that we've implemented is something called daily pay. And it literally allows employees to get paid daily and it's straight through their phone and they don't have to wait until Friday for their paycheck or whatever payday is. And that way they can take care of whatever needs they have. And so being able to adapt in that way, finding out what are the needs of your employees, like what is important to them. And for us, that's what we found was something that was very key and being able to provide that to them in ways that doesn't cost the company a lot of money or any money in this particular case. I like that, excellent. So I'm hearing like a theme here. There's a different set of demands. There's a different set of pressures. And because of that, we're having to be quicker. Michelle, we're having to be a little more tailored and I put the power into the hands of the people. Gemma, some of the same kind of things. We've got to think about the way we're communicating, what opportunities we have. And we can't just say, oh, there's pay for hours, come do it. But let's think about this more strategically. Like what kind of thing are we going to appeal to someone on a deeper and more personal sort of level? Michelle, the next question I want to throw to you, because I think you you started us off a little bit there talking about speed and really getting to the people and making sure that we're meeting their needs as fast as we can. You talked about the hiring onboarding pieces there. What is something that you're proud of when it comes to the experience that you're creating for your workforce? Because I know it's a big question, but what's something in there that you think about? Like, we've done this for them, and I am so excited to talk with this because it's making an impact. 
Yeah, well, mine's kind of a little different. I think of a lot of things that are, are, and it really gives them kind of an integral part of being, being a part of the restaurant and the brand. And as you can see, we love our brand, but it really actually gives them a chance to elevate their love for the brand and show that. And so it really helps with morale and I, and we're really proud of it. <laughs> One of the things that strikes for me is we see in our research that when you create an atmosphere where people feel like they are connected and they belong, they're much more likely to talk about the company right. as a great place to work. Like, I can't wait to tell my, the, my friends about this place I work because they're not going to believe the kind of fun stuff we get to do here. And that's a great example of that. Very practical to say, you know, what you do at work today? Well, you'll never believe, like we did this crazy dance and our customers got in on yeah. it. And there was this, like, just to be able to say those things. And we served some chicken too, but yeah. yeah. Someone got fed, right? There's all the things at the end of the day, yeah. but be able to say like these other things happen beyond what you expect right this is what they expect at work and they're getting something above that when you're giving them a chance to really contribute in that way that's powerful yes yeah jenna anna what's your thoughts uh sure i'll go ahead i think one thing that we are really proud of or that i'm really proud of is watching our team grow internal promotions is something that's very big at our company especially in the field we have about 70 to 80 percent of our employees that are all internal promotions and a lot of that comes from the ability to give our employees the tools to learn to move on to that next step and that comes through something like opus right that's a learning system that we use and employees can have access to how do you become a supervisor what are those steps and we can share it with them and they can start learning and start asking those questions and I think that's really helped us get those really high numbers. And as we're growing really quickly, having someone internally grow with us and promote the brand is better for us than bringing somebody externally and having to maybe teach them some different habits or ways of thinking from another brand. So that's really big for us. Something I'm really proud of us is having those high promotion numbers internally and hopefully continuing that over time. Can I ask you a follow-up on that really quickly before I give Gemma a chance to, to chime in? How do you balance that piece? Because there are some times where managers say, yeah, I know that Michelle's doing a great job and we probably could move her up, but she's doing good where she is. I don't want to, I don't have to back fill that, fill that role. How do you balance that piece out? Do you talk about the retention aspects or, or what else? Yeah, I mean, that's actually really great because that comes up a lot. Sometimes the manager doesn't want to let go of like such a strong person on their team because they want them there. But that has to start that conversation, that change in mindset has to really start early on. That change is important and it's not a bad thing and we have to be open to it. And you know, part of it is, well, we need to grow the rest of our team. It can't just be that you have one star employee and you're holding on to them. Let's make them all star employees. Let's get them all elevated and teach them how to be better. And so and that's a mindset change, right? And that's something that just happens over time. And a lot of it is conversations that we have with them and it takes time, but yeah, it doesn't happen overnight. It's just a mindset that we've instilled within our culture. I like the, this is not just a, you can have one star employee or you can have lots of star employees if you're willing to let them move on and start developing some other ones. That's a really great perspective on that. I've never heard anybody talk about it that way, but I may have to steal it. So fair warning. I'll try to give you credit for it going forward. All right, Gemma, how about you? What are you proud of the Hawksworth sort of organization that you've done for the employee experience there? I mean, there's a couple of things actually, and you reminded me of one, Ben, because actually you used the belonging word. And I think that's something we've really focused on over the last few months really so thinking about how that ties into kind of diversity and inclusion more generally we talk about diversity inclusion equity and belonging and I think for me the belonging word is almost the most important how do people really feel like they've got that connectivity with the brand I think that kind of links back into some of the things that Michelle was talking about we haven't taken that tact and it sounds fascinating and I'd love to pick your brains a bit more on that afterwards Michelle we've used TikTok for some recruitment campaigns which has been successful but that's been like my team behind the scenes but I love empowering the people for sure but you know we've just really focused on our culture really embedding that and I think again that kind of links to what you were talking about Anna in terms of developing people so I think one of the things that really sets us apart is the investment in our managers so how much time we spend training them even if they've been managers elsewhere right they know how to do some of the basics but actually it's the cultural transmission that we talk about how do we really help them to understand our culture so that they can then go and spread that amongst their teams it's so fundamental to our core 
that making sure that we're investing that time with them feels really important. So yeah, I think the work that we're doing on belonging for sure really feels like that's tipping us on. And then that continued focus on development to really embed our culture feel like two two big things, if I'm allowed two big things that I'm proud of. Hey, that's okay, we'll take two. Well, um, one of my good friends last week, you were saying that you got excited with the belonging piece, Gemma. One of my one of my friends last week, she's the chief people officer, and she gave me this phrase that I'd never heard before. It made me laugh, but it was so like so accurate. If anyone out there listening in, one of the people that puts ranch dressing on everything, she's one of those people. And she's like, the ranch dressing of HR is creating a culture where people belong. We can create a culture where they belong through how we hire, how we interview, how we onboard, how we train, how we all these pieces. If we're putting the ranch dressing of HR, on like all of these things, we're creating an atmosphere where people are excited to come to work, where they want to do the right thing, where they believe in the culture, gem. to what you're saying there, like all those kinds of things wrap into it. And Michelle, like part of that's the kind of the fun aspect of the culture, right? A little bit of like, we just want to have some fun here. We're doing good work. We're serving people well, but we want to make sure this is fun as well. A question just popped in that I want to ask you while we're here before we get too far away from it, because someone, as you might expect, had a question in the audience about the TikTok piece. I said, what are your what is do you have concerns about if someone shares something that may not be on brand or something that may be a little bit edgy when it comes to that how do y'all respond to that how do you prevent that what do you, do you train them in advance what are your thoughts and giving them some structure there because someone's curious and wants to know more about it in the audience yeah i think for us for our culture we take the kind of more laid back approach we do like to stay up with the trends and so we we are monitoring that the marketing team is definitely monitoring and making sure nothing is offensive or something like that but we do let them have a lot of freedoms and fun and it just really it's pretty viral through a lot of the restaurants and they i talked to a girl the other day that she said yeah everybody comes in and says oh you're the TikTok girl and so they're getting recognized because they're the face of their restaurant and it's cool that's really neat that's exciting though man goodness okay we don't All get right. too we don't get too wrapped up in in too prescriptive monitoring we don't put a strong fist down but we do monitor it builds a lot of trust i'm sure also with your team you know that you trust them with your brand and right and that i think also says a lot and it ends up going both ways so right yeah, yeah i think that's so important it really reminds me of something we talk about a lot which is adult to adult and we introduce that concept to induction but it flows throughout and i think that's exactly what you're talking about michelle right really treating people as adults giving them the freedom the autonomy yeah and it yeah. sounds like it's paying dividends i love it yeah, that's awesome. You use the word induction, Jim, by the way. And for anyone on this side of the pond, that's onboarding, right? <laughs> right. <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we, if someone heard that, like, wait a minute, I don't know. I don't, that doesn't translate. Sorry, the English word there. It's both, it's all English, but it, it's a different phrasing there. Okay, awesome. So, and I'm going to kick you off with this next question because there have been, you've already shared a couple of things, right? Opus on the training side, you talked about daily pay when it comes to letting people get instant access to their compensation before payday. I think that's really powerful, especially for people on the front line. What other tools, technologies, resources are you putting in the hands of your people that creates more value for them, that helps them feel more connected and tethered to the organization, like more control of their job, any of those kinds of things? What other tools are you using? Because you've already shared a couple with us. Yeah, I mean, Harry's another one that's a big one. We put that in their hands from the very beginning, from the moment a candidate applies through their onboarding, Every day as they're punching in and out, they can look at their punches and see if their hours are correct. Harry plays a huge role in that. And just in general, technology is and does play a huge role in their everyday life. And I do want to point out that it's technology with like that human aspect. It can't just be technology. So for example, like the Opus that we use for the learning and training development, there is a human component. You can't, you can teach someone how to make a salad via a video, but you also have to get your hands dirty and you have to do it yourself. And we understand that people learn in many different ways. Some people learn visually, some people learn doing it themselves. And so sometimes there's just a lot of content and we have different areas that we focus on every quarter. And so, for example, this quarter, we're focusing on what we call three C's, connection, culture, and consistency. And we go through it in the technology section, but then we meet with the team, HR operations, and we talk about it. Like, tell us what you've learned. Tell us what you take away from it. How does this apply to you? And so while technology is involved in every single 
aspect of the employee's life cycle. And we'd like to also include that like human aspect of it as well. The getting your hands dirty piece made me smile because we see in the data, we ask frontline workers, how do you want to build a new skill? It's not through just another class, just another course, just another piece of video, but it's like, I want to try it. I want to experiment. I want to use my hands. I want to experience this. And like you said, building a salad, it's all great to watch the videos until you actually got to put your hands on something and do it. Yeah, it's all over it. You got to actually do it. <laughs> there you go. Like, see, we're all going to get our salad pro tips from Anna today in the conversation. will be great. We need, Gemma, we need a steak tip. And then, Michelle, we've already got Ohana from you. I don't know if there's anything else Hawaiian you can share with us, but we'll figure out what to weave it into the conversation. So that, that's what we see, though, in the data about how they want to learn. It's not just another piece of content, right? That helps. That's a starter point, but they really want the chance to try to do it. And, and that's how we, we learn best. So I like that you, you share that piece. And then those three, again, culture, consistency, and... What's the other one? Connection. Perfect. Okay. The three C's there. Anyone looking for another takeaway? Okay. Jim, how about you? What tools, what technology, what resources are you putting in the hands of each of your frontline workers to help empower them to do their work better? Yeah. So, I mean, I'd echo everyone's thoughts about Harry and just the ability to like look at shifts and bits and pieces on the go. It's so much better than a manager having to send a message out to their teams. But I think on top of that, there's a couple of things that spring to mind. So one of them is our communications platform. So we use Workplace, which is basically Facebook for work. So it's a meta platform. So it's pretty sophisticated. It's quite intuitive. It runs very similar to Facebook which means most people are familiar with it. And again, I think that belonging, that connectivity, it just really encourages those things. People can set up groups about things that they're passionate about. And there's a pets at Hawksmoor group and people love to share things like that. And then there's obviously loads of other work-related stuff as well. So I think that's the first one. And then the second one that springs to mind, which I'm not sure if it's necessarily available in the US, but actually, Anna, it sounds a bit like what you were talking about in terms of the daily pay. We've worked with a company called Wagestream who connect in with Harry. And again, that basically means that people can get their pay as and when they've earned it. And we did a survey last year where people really told us that the cost of living was on their minds, that financial well-being was important to them. And introducing that app not only allows them access to their wages in real time as they've earned it, but actually there's so much more to it than that. There's lots around helping people to save better kind of financial literacy and just generally taking care of their own financial well-being more than they maybe had done before and we've had some really positive feedback and again it's all app based it's really easy to access it's intuitive I think that's the main thing right like that's the common thread tech can be really it can really slow things down if it's not as good as it can be so making sure that whatever tech you're introducing you're checking in with other people that might be using it to see how does it really work on the ground you might get sold a concept but just making sure that it's actually going to add to your employee experience rather than detract because I think it can really yeah be frustrating yes. when it's not working yes it's one thing to say hey we've got this great tool you they start using like well it would be better to offer nothing than to offer something that's yeah. substandard or something that's frustrating to use you mentioned the, the financial well-being piece and I want to throw a quick comment in there I had a chance years ago to interview the founder of a chicken chain called hot chicken takeover and one of the things that he was telling me is they do a lot of hiring of individuals with a criminal record they hired a lot of fair chance individuals to give them a new shot at life and one of the things they found quickly was we don't need to offer them like retirement plans and everything else especially for these individuals it's like they're just trying to resettle in life and so they would do like matching savings so if you're going to save for your car your first car, right? Or we're, I'm saving to get into an apartment, they'll match the deposit that they save up and things. They're using those as a way to help reinforce the right behaviors and help get them back on the right track for life. But the financial well being piece for someone in this space is it could be just simple education, it could be a little bit of the matching savings, it could be something like that. It doesn't have to be something huge that's wildly expensive. There's little nudges in the right direction. So I'm glad you mentioned that piece, Jim, because I think that's really important. All right, Michelle. How about you? I'm loving the Hawaiian shirt, by the way. I meant to comment on that earlier. I love the Hawaiian thanks, shirt. Thanks, you keep that like behind you. your chair just to put on when you have a meeting related yes, to that. Yes, exactly. Perfect. Okay. Um, All right. I think, gonna, well, I think I'm going to flip it a little bit like we do here at Hawaiian Bros. And I am going to say that we try to, and echoing everything that Gemma and Anna have said with Harry and Team Live in the hand and onboarding quick through your phone and seeing your schedule on your phone and, and chatting with your teammates on your app is great but also i think we utilize a lot of mobile technology we have mo mobile ordering devices that they can have it right there in their hand to go 
to go take orders. They also we also have self service kiosks, so you're not dealing with a line out the door. You're, you've got kiosks here and there. We have what we call tour guides and they make sure that everybody's taken care of and knows what they're doing. Some people want help, some people don't. And so that kind of enhances their experience as well as giving them a help, a helping hand when it comes to taking orders and just using that technology to enhance their experience. Tour guides? Technical load off, if you will. Tour uh, guide. Yeah, I tour. like that. Yeah, tour guides. Yeah, well, you're keeping with kind of the theme, right? The Hawaiian theme. So yeah. Yeah, I'll guide you along. So the they menu kind of stand to... between the kiosks and make sure everybody's taken care of and give them a warm greeting and get them some good food. Maybe a lay involved. I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. During Excellent. <laughs> Oh, goodness. All right. So we talked through a lot of different things already so far in the conversation. And again, reminder, I've already seen a couple of good questions come in. If any of you want to know more about something that the panel is sharing here, please pop that in the chat. We'd love to make sure we address that for you. One of the questions that came in a little bit earlier, and I'm just going to open this up because I don't know which one of you wants to chime in on it, but someone else asked a little bit earlier about flexibility. I said, how do you address that with the the people we're serving here, because it's not as simple as saying, okay, yeah, you can take those orders from your couch or you can right, serve that meal from, that doesn't work here. How do you look at flexibility? What does that mean to your workforce and how are you helping to enable that for them? I'm happy to jump in. I mean, it's tricky, right? Like, for all the reasons that you've just talked about, Ben, it's not as easy as it is in some other businesses that have a totally different setup. But I think it's really trying to understand from the teams what it is that they're looking for on a specific level. So it's about that relationship with a manager, understanding a bit about that person beyond, you know, them when they come into work. Have they got family? Can we be a little bit more flexible? Are there certain days that they want off? We can't necessarily accommodate it all, but I think it's really just trying to understand what would a great rotor look like for everybody? How can we try and tick as many of those boxes as possible? We've also started doing some work in some of the restaurants where they can facilitate four day working weeks rather than splitting their hours over five days. Again, it's all like restaurant dependent at the moment, but these are definitely things that we've said that we want to look at more at a business level to see if there's some best practice that we can share across all of our restaurants so that everybody can benefit from them because for sure it's it's what people really are craving and what they want and if that means that we can retain more people because they can see that they can have that and have a fantastic and fulfilling career in hospitality then it's win-win so I think it's really trying to be flexible and less rigid than maybe we might have been in the past where it's no these are the hours and that's the only option. Yes, this is your shift. Take it or leave it. Now you're saying, here's some options here. We're being flexible. We're trying this new thing out. Do you want to try that? Like you giving some options there. Okay. Putting the power back into the hands of the people. I like it. Michelle, Anna, anything else to add to that? I, I actually had flexibility with schedules on my notes. And then I also have empower your managers to to be able to recognize and reward the frontline workers. They don't have to go through. They can reward as they see fit. We have an Aloha Spirit Award. We have pays for A's. So when they get good grades, they get paid for that. We have referral bonuses. The TikToks, they win every week. We have at our company get together, our meeting, our film room meeting. We announce two winners from the TikTok videos in the previous week. And we just like to, yeah, empower our managers to, hey, you got five good reviews this week. Here, here's $25 to go spend at Starbucks, whatever, I, 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 whatever they want. So we give them that autonomy and let them reward those frontline workers. That's really important. You don't give them Hawaiian Brothers gift cards. That might be a little bit self-serving. So we'll give them some, <laughs> some coffee. We run, on, else. Okay. we run on coffee. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, other you... coffee places. We like all coffee. We do not yes. discriminate coffee. Awesome. I, well, I, I like that though. I like that because the next question I want to, I was going to ask in a minute is about bringing the managers into this because so many people listening and they think, well, this is all great. And Jim is doing cool stuff and Anna, and Michelle, like they're, but I can't do all this because we have a small team or we're limited in our resources. And so we're going to talk about managers in just a moment on that piece. Anna, do you have anything on the flexibility before I jump into the manager piece? Or are you good? No, I mean, I think they both hit it, hit the nail right. on the head. I mean, you got to know your team and you got to know what they want and that's really the only way to go about it versus you just sitting in a room being like oh this is a great idea let me do this it might be different market to market too so just know your team mm, that's a really great recommendation just, too 
just going to jump in actually with one more point that we've been thinking about and talking about quite a lot and that's really just giving people visibility as early as possible about their rotors it won't always be the perfect rotor for them that's just the way it is but if you can give it to people as far in advance as possible and I'm, I'm not saying that there's not work to do for us for sure it's an area of focus it's difficult trade fluctuates you need to be reactive but we're really trying to think about how can we forecast better which allows us to think about what those rotors look like give people as much notice as possible so that they can work around it are those schedules is that what you're talking about yes yeah okay. yeah yeah okay. i'm, I'm, I'm the, the international translator here i'm like making sure i've got it all right if that's what we should have done like. this beforehand shouldn't we right. the UK, no no it's right um, because always... anyone that speaks with your accent it's like i'm getting it completely and anyone who speaks with mine is saying <laughs> I think that's she's talking about that. Okay, I'm making sure confirming for us. Okay, yeah. but so getting the schedule out as early as you can. Again, yes. that's hard. There may be changes, but trying to say, hey, we're trying to predict this for you, give you a little bit more certainty in your life. So if we don't yeah. tell you, hey, by the way, tomorrow will be here at 8 a.m. Like that's hard on people and that creates a lot of friction. So I think it's a really great recommendation as well. Excellent. All right, Anna, I'm going to pick on you for this last one to start us off, if you don't mind. So if someone's listening into this, we heard from Michelle a little bit there on really empowering and enabling frontline managers. She talked a little bit about what they're doing at Hawaiian Brothers. What other advice would you give the people listening in here to help make sure those managers are supporting their people, are plugged in, have the resources they need? Because sometimes the trickle down problems that we end up facing as HR leaders come from them being unprepared, them not having the right support in the front end. What are your thoughts on that? So a couple things. I would say the first thing is that building that relationship with them, and this is actually something we have across the board. A lot of times people are like, leave your problems at the door. We don't want to hear about it. We take a very different approach to that. We want to hear problems. We want to know what's going on. And it starts at a higher level, and we do that with our managers so that they then can also do the same thing with their employees because maybe someone is having a really rough go at it. Maybe they need five minutes before their shift to clear their head before they can come in and greet a customer. Or maybe it's something bigger. Maybe they're at a very high volume restaurant and maybe we need to move them for a couple months somewhere else where it's lower volume, less customers because they've got a lot going on at home and they can't work as many hours, right? And so it starts by us doing it and showing it with our managers so that they can also do it with their employees. So leading by example, um, that's like a big one for us. So supporting those managers, trying to make sure they they are heard, they felt listened to, right? Their needs are met so that they're able to model that for their own people, correct? Correct, yeah. Perfect. Okay. I want to make sure I had that one right. That was that's a really great one. I was actually talking yesterday with a group about how we expect managers to be great, to do great things. Many of them have not had a leader in the past that modeled that for them. So unless we're specifically telling them, here's what we expect from you, here's what a great looks like. They're just shooting in the dark and hoping that they're going to hit on the right thing. And they never know. Usually they find out later, oh, that was the wrong thing. But then in the moment, they always know what they're aiming for. Okay. Excellent. So that's empowering managers. Jim, anything from you on that? What are your thoughts on how to help our managers be the leaders that we would like for them to be? Yeah. So, I mean, we take a really similar approach in terms of supporting the whole person and making sure that people feel really comfortable to share whatever it is that's going on in their life. And I think that point is spot on about if that's the experience you've had, it's much easier for you to be able to do that with your team as well. I think on top of that, some of the things that we do, we actually have a model where in each of our restaurants, and they're big restaurants, so they kind of range anything between maybe 60 to 160 team members in each restaurant. So big teams, we have a general manager and we have two, we tend to have two gen, uh, assistant general managers. And one of those kind of has specific responsibility for HR. Not that means that they're the person that everybody goes to. There's still a management structure in place. Each person has their own specific manager, but it's just somebody that is almost an extension of my team that's there, that's visible, that knows what tools we've got in place that can support people more than maybe any other manager would necessarily be able to absorb. It's, it's baked into their job description. We manage them against that as well. And I think that really helps. It also really helps to demonstrate the importance of people in our business and in our culture. We talk about people so much and having somebody really visible in each restaurant that's spearheading that, but also making sure that everybody's championing it feels really important. Do you hire specifically for someone that has an experience in that area? Or do you say, as they're coming on, we're going to be training you with some additional training stuff on compliance or on other best practices? How do you actually 
support that person so that they are able to do that well without you saying, hey, yeah. call me when you got a question and it's, your phone rings endlessly. Yeah, so no, we don't hire people specifically that have got that skill set. We equip them with those skills. People come with various different experiences, obviously, but yeah, we've got like a, an annual program and my team are really heavily involved with that group. We have check-ins really regularly just to understand like what's going on in your restaurant. Are there any particular themes that are coming up at the moment? And actually talking with that group also then helps to inform our overall annual kind of people plan because we can get that information from those people on the ground, but also understand where they feel less confident. So there's certain things and quite often it's some of the more processy employment law things that sometimes they feel a little bit less comfortable with so we can just make sure that we then dive in and do some training with them to really equip them and give them the confidence to be able to deliver a great process every time whilst also being compliant excellent thank you for that I was that was a really unique kind of perspective on it I was kind of curious about it Michelle I want to come back to you on this piece because you kicked us off on the talking to the manager things that y'all do and how you get them really involved do you train them on how to do some of those things you talk about like really supporting their people so that they know how to do this and give the awards and everything else is that something that's that the first time they do it you walk alongside them like how do you get them really prepared to do that because as I, we started out a little minute a couple bit ago most managers don't know exactly how to do those things or they're concerned about i don't know how to give feedback to someone else or how, what do i even say or like talk about how you prepare managers for some of those kind of things you were talking about a minute ago because you talk about the end result of like they get to do the fun things they get to keep things away but it comes from really supporting them through the week and really making sure they're there when they need them, all those kind of things. Yeah, I think that they just, they definitely, it's something that we, I've been lucky to be here since store number five open. So it's something that we've just grown. And as we bring new managers in during the training process, they, they're seeing this and they're seeing this from their people that they're, the restaurants that they're being trained by or the managers that they're being trained by. So I do believe that they foster how and when is appropriate and don't go crazy and are definitely regulate that. But I think that they come in to our restaurants and they, it's just infectious. They want to be a part of it and they want, and as they know that they have the autonomy to be able to reward these workers, they're like, what can I do? Can I do this? Can I, I mean, they'll, they, they definitely have a little guidance there. Okay. Okay. Excellent. So you're not just saying, we don't, here's the keys, we don't bring it back to the full time. No. Perfect. I'm hearing this come through a couple times in your answers, right? There's trust here. We picked you because we believe in you. We picked you because we trust right. you. We're giving you, right. You have a question, please come. We want to make sure you're supported, but otherwise we trust you to make the right choices. We're trusting you to take care of your people. I think that's a great place to, to hang your hat on. There's a, the opposite side of that, obviously, is we bring you in. We don't trust you at all. Or why don't you pick us for the job? You don't trust us. But we're trying to take away all your freedom. We're here's the very specific process. We're expecting you to do all these things, check all these boxes, but there's no real relationship in it. And that makes it really hard for managers to be authentic with their people and really connect with them. Right. As we've talked about a it couple starts times. with who we're hiring for sure. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. We had a question come in from the audience here. It mentions the TikTok thing again. Sorry, Michelle, like you're gonna you're gonna get like all the questions on that. So someone said, but more broadly, I want you, Jim, and I want you, Anna, to listen to this because there might be something you could chime in on. Has any addition of tech into supporting your workforce here had an unexpected or a positive impact potentially? Positive or negative, I'll throw that in there. Has it had an unexpected impact? And the example they gave is like when the TikTok thing, like that's kind of a fun thing. I said, oh, it may create more belonging, may improve morale, things like that. It was just a kind of a fun marketing thing, but it ends up connecting over and blending over into the value employees feel in that employment relationship. Anyone else that has thrown some technology in there for your people, there's been like, oh, we didn't expect this thing to happen, but this was a good side effect. Or we put scheduling in place just to handle schedules because our managers were pulling their hair out. And now the employees are actually happier because they're getting more visibility in that. Any thoughts? You want to chime in on that? We, one of the things I was going to bring up is that we do what we call the smiley survey, the smiley feedback at okay. every night when the employees clock out of the tablet, the, before they can actually clock out, they have to, it just says, how are you feeling today? Smile or frown? And they, yeah. And so they, we do that and we're actually seeing the, the smiles trend upwards and that's really something that we, we're just like let's put something up there let's check it out let's see what they 
see, get the temperature of some of these restaurants. And now that they know that we're analyzing it and looking at it, then we're actually seeing that trend up and that's been impressive to us and obviously a good thing to see that that it's trending upwards. <laughs> Yes. Well, it's good to see overall, but you, now you have a look in something you didn't have before. Additional data point that you can keep tabs on how things are going and what's happening there. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. And if somebody specific is always frowning, then we can then intervene and reach in and see what's going on and more of the stuff like Anna talked about and see if they need any assistance there. And we use all voices as well to give them the option to, it's an employee relations platform. They can, okay. they can either comment in anonymously or they can let us know who they are and yeah we review all of those as well okay so if we're sharing concerns or feedback or issues things like that mm -hmm. all right and that was all voices correct all voices yeah okay we'll make sure, we're sharing like a list of tools out here we need to put together like a handout of all the tools that we're the sharing smiley feedback okay. through harry right through the time clock Yes, yes, I got, I was betting that one, but I'll, we've shared like a handful of other things beyond that. I want to make sure we were capturing for the audience here in case someone's taking or missing taking notes in there. They don't want, like, I want to go back and get all the right things for everybody. Okay. So this one kind of dovetails off of what you were just sharing there about really understanding what, what your frontline people are thinking, how they're feeling, what's going on there. The last question I wanted to throw to y'all before we see if there's any more questions from the audience here is around understanding your people. So we talked about the manager piece of technology. And I want to figure out how do we understand what your workers are feeling, what their priorities are, what they're thinking, what's going on with them, so that you can take action in the right moment. So you talked about all voices. You gave us an example of, of doing the sentiment piece there, Michelle. So you've already picked that one out. Gemma, Anna, one of you have a thought or a comment there on how you're really keeping tabs on what your people are, what's bubbling up the surface that they need from you? Yeah, I'm happy to chime in here i mean multiple ways i think there's not necessarily one way that works for everybody so i think we really try and make sure we're doing quite a lot of this i think one of the things is making sure that we talk about ourselves rather than a head office as being a support team but there's something about being really visible and actually getting out into the restaurants and just being there and observing what's going on and just checking in with people it's amazing what you pick up that way quite organically so, you know, that's one way that we really encourage it. We also have some more formal channels. So we do an engagement survey once a year where everybody gets the opportunity to share their thoughts. We look at trends at a whole business level. We can then break that down into what that means for each restaurant. We make sure that there's loads of one-to-ones happening really regularly. And again, encourage that to be about, uh, well, a very two-way conversation between managers and their teams. And then I think the more recent thing that we've introduced, which again has got more of a specific diversity and inclusion angle on it, is some employee resource groups and networks. So the networks exist on our comms platform where everybody can join and you can be as active or passive as you want in contributing to that community, sharing your thoughts, asking questions, providing feedback. But then we've also got a small number of those people that want to be more actively involved in changing the dial in a particular space when we're thinking about underrepresented groups in particular. They can use, we, we have volunteering hours, so everybody gets 20 paid hours of volunteering a year. And if they want to take part in those groups, then they can use their volunteering hours. So they're getting paid for their time. We don't expect people to do this kind of outside of work for free. And they can really make more of a contribution in helping shape the agenda, share their feedback and say, I want to make this change happen. And they're the ones that are driving it. And that's much more powerful when, you know, it's, being done collaboratively rather than us thinking we understand what a certain group of our team might want, but missing the mark sometimes. Is all of that happening on their mobile device? All of this, all of the chances for them to chime in, respond to surveys, things like that? Uh, a lot of it, yeah. I mean, yeah, pretty much all of it would be accessible in one way or another on their mobiles. Some of it we do do in person. You can't necessarily always yeah. replicate being in a room with people, but actually where we are now much more geographically spread as well, you have to make use of technology. And yeah, if you've got a mobile phone, then you can get involved one way or the other with all of this stuff. Okay, excellent. All right, Anna, anything to add on really understanding your people? How do you approach this at Just Salad? How do you make sure you know what's going on in the minds of each of your people so that you can support them? Yeah, I mean, very similar approach to Gemma's. We've got informal ways. We've got your engagement surveys that go out. You've got the structured meetings we have. 
between departments with employees on how they're doing. And then more like informal, like having a presence, like having, I go out to all my stores and schedule it throughout the year. And I'm like, I want you to know who I am. I want you to put a face to the name and for me to put a face to your name. I see all of your names in front of my desk every day when you get a promotion when you transfer, when you have a life-changing event, right? You're like having a baby. I see all of that. I want to know who you are and I want you to know who I am. And we found that, or I have found that it leads to much better communication. Employees can feel more comfortable reaching out to me. And then I just learn a lot more of what's going on in the field. I find things that are going on that's like, just by like passing and it's like, oh, that's really great to know. It's something that I probably would have found out a week later. And now I'm finding out in the moment just by nature of being there and being able to communicate a lot faster. Yeah, excellent. I like, it's a quicker feedback loop for you, right? You can anticipate something, you can be more proactive instead of finding out after the things already happened, you can be right there in the moment to figure it out. I like that, really enjoy that. Okay, all right. So one of the questions we got from the audience here, I think they specifically asked you, Gemma, but I think all three of you probably could chime in because it's related to what you've all talked about, different, the different tools, the different ways that you're putting employees Right, putting the tools in their hands so they can do the things they need to do. The question is, several of you have mentioned different platforms, different tools, different resources you're giving people to to engage with and interact with when it, at work. And like that's that could be a lot of apps potentially. That's five or six different tools, things like that. Are they all doing this on their phones? Is it too many? Do you have people that say, well, I don't want another app on my phone? How do you respond to some of those kind of things? How do you manage all of that? Because I know it can be become a app frenzy or whatever you want to call it so Gemma you can start us off but if you, either of you other two have something to chime into I'd love to hear you yeah so I think it's definitely something we're mindful of we don't want to bombard people and we really evaluate every time a new opportunity presents itself that has got an app whether we see significant benefit I think something like wage stream is optional people don't have to have that but actually there's such a big benefit to people if they do have it that a lot of people will voluntarily download it. When it comes to the other things that we talked about, they can be accessed in a browser as well. So whether that's on a computer in the office, when they're in work, if they need to, or on a browser on their phone, it maybe doesn't feel quite as intrusive if they're not then getting push notifications all of the time. I think by and large, it does depend on the individual, but actually people in general tend to see such a benefit from these things and it makes their life a lot easier that we haven't had a huge amount of pushback. You may not know the answer to this, but is this age correlated to? Would someone who's younger be more likely to say, yeah, throw me an app, I'd love to just use that, or you haven't noticed anything in that as far as the trend? Not necessarily. No, there might be some sort of correlation. I wouldn't want to necessarily make any assumptions around that. That's all right. I was just curious if you'd noticed anything. Michelle, Anna, anything else you'd like to add there just about when we're putting these things out there for our people, as we talked about through the whole conversation today, it's about empowering them and everything else. And there's a point where it's like, like the wave crashes over and there's so many things that we're trying to put in their hands that it may be a little bit confusing. Like, how do you manage that? How do you make sure that they're able to get all the things? It's just a lot of communication. Is it making sure your managers are ready for this? Talk about that piece of it, dovetail off what Gemma was sharing. I think Gemma said it perfectly, and it probably goes across the board there. But I mean, I think for it, it's a little different for our management teams. They, of course, have a lot more apps, but it does make things easier for them. So I think they they welcome those. And then the team members, I think that we really try to keep it down to just a few. So as she said, some are optional, so they don't have to use them. And I, I don't see too many issues with that okay. or problems. Anything else to add, Anna, or are you good? Yeah, no, I would just say we also haven't seen that much pushback. And one thing that we do is also offer an alternative so that, I don't know, if you don't want to use your phone, you don't want to download it on your phone. We have iPads at the store. We have computers so that they don't feel like they have to use their, up their data or anything like that. And so just providing an alternative is key. All right. Excellent. Okay, wonderful. So we had some amazing conversation. Gemma from Hawksmoor, Anna from Just Salad, Michelle from Hawaiian Brothers. Thank you to each of you for joining us, for sharing your insights, for being so freely and supportive of the community here, helping everybody else listening in to up-level their practices and support their build better. Thank you to all of you for joining us as well out there. From an audience perspective, we appreciate you for spending some of your day with us. Thank you to Harry and the team there for making all this possible. We appreciate you and have a wonderful rest of your day. 
thank you so much for joining me on the show today. I am honored to have you as a listener. If you enjoyed this episode, please take 10 seconds to rate it at iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to your podcast. Also, if you know a friend that could benefit from today's conversation, please pass it their way. After all, a rising tide lifts all ships. To see show notes, sponsor information, and our full show archives, visit OnlyHumanShow.com. 